right now. No, it's okay, babe. This is easiest. Thank you, though. Um, today, I'm going to teach you how to write a very long sentence like Dr. King wrote in his letter from Birmingham jail. And I'm going to call it, it's a periodic sentence, but I'm going to call it a periodic poem because of the way you're going to put it on the page. Okay, and I'm going to show you an example of that in just a moment, okay? We are going to write a periodic sentence. Now, it's going to have these tools in it. It's going to use anaphora. It's going to be a periodic sentence, so the subject and the predicate are going to be what, near what? Let me hear you say it. Near what punctuation mark? Period. The period in the sentence. And it's going to use at least five, hold up your hand, five adverb clauses. How many did King use? He used 10. So I'm only asking that you use five, and I'm about to show you the directions, and then I'm going to show you two really good examples, okay? So right now, all you have to do is Here pay attention. Here are the directions, and I'm going to talk about them for just a minute, okay? <laughs> choose a topic. Now, I, I truly... You can choose any topic. So I might write about the ski slope. Another great topic for me is the summer camp I went to. Loved it. It's like heaven on earth going to summer camp. You could write about summer camp. Um, do you have a favorite sport you enjoy playing? You could write about it. Do you have a favorite person you love hanging out with? You could write about your person and the things you've done. You could write about your dog. You could write about going to Paris. You could write about London. You could write about um, a Hawaiian vacation you went on with your family. Whatever. You could write about anything you enjoy. Okay, number two up there. Write a sentence with at least how many? Five. Adverb clauses all beginning with the same subordinate conjunction. So what are we creating when we use that same anaphora? We're creating anaphora just like King did. Win, 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 okay? Number three, punctuate correctly using either semicolons or commas. I'm about to teach you when to use either one of them, okay? When to use them. And then number four, use other poetic devices like imagery, make me see it. Similes, metaphors, personification. I want maybe a little bit of alliteration, sprinkle it in there. Number five, type the sentence in poetic form and then create a title and a byline and, in, and then I don't want you to do number seven. Don't embellish with decorations or graphics, okay? Don't do that. All right, go ahead and get out your packet right now and turn to that very last page in your packet. Last page of your packet, page 10, I have a poem. Do you see how I have the same sentence on that page two different ways? Okay, at the very top, the sentence with five adverb clauses and an independent clause, I'm going to read it right now, okay? Look at the very top of the page. And I've underlined all the adverb clauses. When the moon sinks low and the stars slip into dusty drivel, semicolon. When the sun, a beam of warmth, peeks over the horizon, semicolon. When the light etches the wall, the bedpost, the quilt with loving fingers, semicolon. When the songbirds sing me good morning, semicolon. When the cool, fresh air beckons me to awaken, semicolon. And then I have the independent clause. Then I, subject, will rise and greet the day, that is the greet, compound pre predicate, greet the day with gladness in my heart. So where is the independent clause? At the end, near what period, near, near what punctuation point? Period. period. It makes it a periodic sentence. So if we were just typing that sentence in the in a letter-like format, like Dr. King did his speech, it would look like that. But look below. This is how I want you to type it on your page. Do you see how I put each adverb clause on the margin? Win, 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 win. Do you see that? Touch it on your page so I know that you see what I'm talking about. Okay, where does the independent clause go? It'll be the last line of what looks like a poem, okay? Do you see, touch the last line, I wanna see you do it. Where's the last line? And, and touch the subject of the sentence in the last line. Everyone say it out loud, what's the subject? Rise. What's the predicate? Rise. We'll rise and greet, okay? It's a compound predicate. So I want you to have a title for your poem, but mine's called New Beginning. And a byline. What's a byline, Margaret? A byline? Um, it's easy. It's by and your name. Oh. Do you see mine up there? Yes, New beginning is the title, and then my byline is by Jacqueline Ward Rains. That's easy. Okay, now, okay, go ahead. Um, why isn't it um, 
will the predicate? Why is it rise and greet? Oh, okay. I will rise and will greet. It's kind of a, it's a helping verb. Because okay. uh, this is all the pre predicate right there. Okay. Good question. Yes. When should you use a semicolon at the end of your adverb clauses? And when should you use a comma? Okay, I'm going to teach you a lesson. Turn to page nine. Look at page nine's poem. Read it to yourself. It's on page nine. We're going to talk about why she uses commas at the end of her adverb clauses instead of semicolons. Okay, notice in her clauses, she doesn't have any extra commas except for the ones on the ends. And so those commas on the ends kind of represent that there's a list going on. What if she had a comma in the middle of one of her adverb clauses? Um, then there would be a semicolon. Then you switch to all semicolons. Even if just one clause has one little comma in it, an extra comma, then all the list ones, all the list commas on the end, immediately transform into semicolons. Do you understand that? So let's practice. I'm going to show you. Let's say that she wrote, because men wear shiny comma cowboy boots to business meetings, what would all of these commas immediately change into? All of them would turn into semicolons, not just that one at the top, because then now you're looking for semicolons to show you every part of the list. In my poem, I was real extreme. I tried to use all different commas and stuff, but let's pretend that in my poem, I only had a comma like in the second one, <laughs> when the sun comma, a beam of warmth comma, because there's an apostrophe phrase there, that's why there's commas around that peaks over the horizon. Okay, let's just pretend that one clause had extra commas and all the others did not. Which ones of these would be semicolons on the end then? All of them. All of them. I think y'all have understood. Okay, what I want you to do right now is mark, annotate any poetic devices you see in there. Read my poem to yourself. Mark any imagery, simile, metaphors, personification, alliteration. Mark it all.